Hi, everybody. I'm Spencer Harden, and, I and we present to you Habit Hacker, where you can hack your habits and hack your life. So um, I'm Spencer Harden, as I mentioned. Um, I went to UC Santa Barbara. I was originally a data science major, and I worked as a data analyst intern at Morgan Stanley. Um, after that, I decided I wanted to enter the field of software development, so I changed majors to geography to study um, skills like GIS and programming. After I graduated, I um, was reached out to by a recruiter at Dev10, and the rest is history. And with that, I'll pass it over to Omar. Thank you, Spencer. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Omar Nafadi. Um, I'm originally from uh, Cairo, Egypt, where I started my uh, bachelor's degree um, in petroleum engineering. Uh, I eventually uh, graduated or finished my uh, uh, degree in um, Portsmouth, England, uh, from the University of Portsmouth. And while I was working the last couple of years, um, while I was working on my theses and, and various projects, I was using a lot of software, um, you know, for simulations and and other aspects that just made me like made like reaffirmed my 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 love to for you know for using software and 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 just wanted I wanted to understand how these softwares. Um, you know, get developed and uh, that just um, made me, um, you know, wanted to pursue uh, getting into this industry. So that's how I ended up um, uh, here. And uh, I will pass it over to Travis. Thank you, Omar. Um, I'm Travis Coppinger and I graduated from Oregon State University with a Bachelor's of Science in Computer Science. Um, so I've been in the computer science field for a few years now. Um, one interesting part was during college, it's um, kind of piecemeal what you learn and when you learn it. Um, so coming into Dev 10, I was able to get the whole complete package in a quick 12 weeks. Um, and I've, I've really enjoyed this process. So what is Habit Hacker? Habit Hacker is a, tra a habit tracking application. You can add a broad goal to start and then define the necessary habits to achieve your goals. From there, you can log events of you performing those habits to track your progress. Whether you want to start a healthy, productive habit or you want to quit an unhealthy, destructive habit, Habit Hacker is the app for you. And with that, I'll pass it over to Omar. So why Habit Hacker um, exactly? So we, um, we had many reasons um, you know, for creating um, this application and um, you know, some of which are we were just interested in creating something to help improve lives, um, um, you know, of, of, you know, family members or, or friends, um, you know, and enhance productivity. Uh, I'm sure we all like know people or even just ourselves that we have some habits that we can work on. Um, so that would just uh, that we just decided to, you know, create that to kind of aid us into uh, having a more fulfilling and uh, just a you know, more, more productive, uh, you know, lifestyle. Um, and with that, we will go into our front end technologies that we used um, for this application. Um, we used uh, React um, and as, as well as TypeScript, Tailwind, um, style components and recharts, which all four were part of our learning goals. Um, I think uh, we all, I, I mean, I will speak for myself. Uh, I, I heavily, heavily enjoyed uh, Tailwind specifically with the uh, style components and uh, recharts. Um, but yeah, overall, uh, it was it was a really uh, challenging and fun learning goals that we, we decided to, to pick and uh, we're very happy with it. And I'll pass it to Travis. Yeah, so going to our backend technologies, we used Java for our server-side code, along with Spring and Maven to give us those default packages to make things uh, a lot easier to work with. And then we used MySQL for our database. I'll pass it off to Spencer. And for our DevOps tools, we use GitHub for collaborative software development. And then we also use Docker to run our MySQL database. With that, I'll give you a quick overview of our database schema here. Um, there's a lot going on, but the main things that you'll need to pay attention to is that we have an app user who can log in. They can then define a broad general goal. And with that goal, you can add specific habits to help you achieve those goals. With those habits, you can then add events 
of you performing those habits to uh, track your progress. And with that, we will start the demo. I'll hand it off to Spencer. So we have our front, our homepage here where we welcome you to Habit Hacker. We have a YouTube video that shows your days in jelly beans for visuals. And with this video, it really reinforces the theme of our website is that we want our users to make the most out of, the, out of their days. And they will do that by improving their habits and thus improving their lives. And at the bottom, we have a carousel of very inspirational quotes from various figures throughout history. And they're there to motivate and kind of reinforce that idea that if you uh, develop successful habits and healthy habits, you too can be successful. And if we go over to the About Us page, we will have individual entries about each one of the team members and our reasoning for wanting to develop this application. Uh, we all have a various, very strong reasons that uh, led us to developing this application and we're all very passionate about it. So if you wanna read it later, you can feel free to visit our website. And with that, I will pass it over to Omar. Thank you, Spencer. Okay, let's get into the fun stuff. Um, so, Let's just start by logging in um, with with an existing user, and you know, it looks like uh, John Smith is using our app, so we will uh, log in as him, and let's just see what he's up to. Okay, so uh, we go to uh, uh, the my profile section, which is John's profile, um, and we can see here that uh, John has like a few goals. Uh, you know, one uh, he put on hold, which is learn to dance. And in progress, it looks like he's in a loss, uh, you know, a weight loss journey. So it kind of makes sense that he's, you know, maybe, maybe putting learning to dance on hold for now. And, uh, you know, he had already completed a goal. He saved some money for a trip to Europe. Uh, so that's great. Um, but let's just, you know, let's just take a look into what, uh, yeah, you know, what's, what's, yeah, what Sean is up to in his lost weight journey. Let's just view what he's up to. Okay. So we now are in his goal overview page, and it looks like he has some habits that he, you know, he added to help him achieve that goal. So it looks like he, you know, try, is trying to go to the gym five days a week, um, you know, track his meals every day and like play tennis once a week. And, you know, coincidentally today, John decided that he wanted to play tennis this morning. So, you know, he added some notes and the date that he uh, played, played tennis or did that specific habit. And once he submits, it will take him back to the profile page. And let's just say he wants to you know, view again. And then it looks like, yeah, the graph is updated with the, um, you know, the habit that he, you know, he just submitted. Um, and also there are, you know, if he, let's just say he wanted to, see like if he went to the gym you know the last couple of days he can't really remember so he decided to do the view event page which is going to take him to um another page that has a list of you know a few a few entries of events of you know his workouts looks like he he's, he's on a good track uh this week um four days not bad um but actually i think he made a mistake and he didn't actually do leg day on the sixth, so he just, you know, he's just decided to delete it. So he'll go and do that. And um, perfect, it looks like it's, you know, everything got updated and uh, now he's he's on track and um, he's feeling good. And with that, I will pass it over to Travis. So, you know, he can show you what, when you guys start, you know, signing up for this application, what you guys can do. Thank you, Omar. Yes, so we, we see all this good stuff for, for John Smith, but what if you, the user, want to add your goals? Well, let's, let's do that. So let's log out of John Smith's account and let's sign up. Uh, I'm gonna create an account here. I've got some goals that I wanna keep track of. So I will enter in my super secret password. And once you sign up, you're taken to the login page. Now we see that we don't have any goals, which I do not. So let's add one. Um, as some members of the cohort may remember from um, our introductions, I am on a uh, I'm on track to learning Japanese. So let's let's add this in as a goal. Uh, select an end date and click submit, and it adds an in progress goal. Uh, 
You can always edit this goal to edit the start date, the end date, or the name of the goal, and as well as the status of the goal. Um, for now, let's take a look at this habit, or let's take a look at this goal. Currently, there are no habits, so let's add some habits. Uh, some habits that are good for learning languages, um, studying vocabulary, along with studying the grammar. Now, I, I want to do that three times a week. I think that's a good, um, good schedule for that. And let's do some auditory learning. Let's listen to a podcast, watch some Japanese TV shows. Okay, so now we're here. And as John did before, let us add a, let's add an event. So this morning I was really diligent and I studied my vocabulary this morning before work. So I'll add that in here. I'll add that in for today. And if we go in, we can see it populates the graph and I can always view that event. Um, or delete it here. So this is our main functionality of our website, is being able to track these high-level goals, assign the lower-level specific habits, and then track how often we're doing these habits and making progress towards our goal. Oh, Spencer, it looks like you are muted. Thank you for that. So some achievements that we're really proud of as a group are that we were able to integrate multiple learning goals um, throughout our project. We were uh, we really liked working together as a team and we worked very cohesively and that really allowed us to integrate multiple learning goals while also developing using the tools that we learned throughout the cohort. Um, we were really proud that we were able to use GitHub as a team and resolve merge conflicts. A lot of the merge conflicts that we came into were really small ones uh, that didn't cause too many issues. And the ones that did cause issues, we were able to work through uh, together as a team very, um, very uh, amicably and very cohesively. And um, we're really proud that we were able to overcome workflow errors and unforeseen blockers, you know, the ones that the little errors that come up that you don't really expect, but they, they come up in the code and then we were able to go right through them and move on to the next task. And so, so for some challenges that we're really, um, we really are proud of the overcoming are that we were building, we were tasked with building a user based app where each user had access to private information. Now, this is different from the past where we build applications from an admin perspective, where you have access to all the user's private data. This uh, required some changes with how we um, designed our application, making it from a user perspective, and so that users can't see other, other users' data. Um, and that was a challenge we were proud of overcoming. Uh, we were also challenged with um, understanding how to implement TypeScript as opposed to JavaScript. JavaScript was taught in the curriculum. TypeScript was a learning goal. And some of the errors were little syntax errors that weren't too hard, and then others were big chunks of code had to be changed. But either way, we were really happy with how we were able to overcome the challenge of learning TypeScript and our learning goal. And um, the third challenge that we overcame was adjusting our scope given time constraints and challenges faced. So we had a uh, team member who had their power go out and we had two weeks to finish this entire full stack application. And we had to really prioritize what was important and get rid of some of the stuff that was either too ambitious or not enough time left. But either way, we, that was another challenge that we overcame. And with that, I will pass it over to Travis. So I want to give a special, we as a team want to give um, a few specific members a special thank you. Thank you to the instructors, Joe, Irina, and Essen. We wouldn't be here without you guys, and it, it means a lot that um, you guys specifically were the ones teaching us. Um, I also want to give a thanks to my cat. She was there for me when I was stressed um, and really made um, everything a breeze. Um, and with that, I will hand it over to questions. Thank you so much, guys, for your fantastic presentations. Thank you, Travis, uh, Spencer, and Omar. Um, and we are now open for Q&A. Um, attendees, please use the uh, chat, um, Zoom chat, to submit your questions. Here is the first question from uh, James Churchill. Uh, he said, excellent job on your project. Would you use TypeScript again? Um, I'm, I would like to answer this question. Um, I'm very happy that we learned TypeScript, and I think that I would definitely use it again for a specific application. So if I was looking for a strongly typed language similar to Java, I consider Java and TypeScript to be more alike than Java and JavaScript. Um, I would definitely be looking more to use TypeScript. However, if I wanted something that was a little less strict and a little more free-flowing, I would use JavaScript. So my answer is 
is that I would uh, change my answer depending on which application I was planning on building. But knowing both is a really uh, great tool moving forward. What an excellent answer. I like it. Um, if uh, Travis or Omar want anything to edit, um, that's good. Otherwise, I'll move to the next question. Uh, yeah, I was about TypeScript. I I would definitely use it again. Uh, I, it was it was definitely a challenge to kind of um, deal with all the type uh, errors and 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 constraints and and things like that. I did love that there were interfaces similar to what we were doing in uh, um, you know Java, um, like in the back end. So that was kind of similar. That made it a little less scary. Um, but if, if anything out of this project, if I would use it again, it would be absolutely uh, like the Tailwind and the style components that has been so much fun to work with. Because um, most of the cohort, like, you know, we weren't, we weren't really doing, using much of that kind of front end technologies. And uh, that, you know, those, those you know, last two weeks uh, gave us a chance to kind of be more creative and, and, and explore other things um, that, you know, that are available. And, um, I would definitely use uh, any of any of the technologies that we used again for sure. That's so good to hear. Excellent. Um, next question is from Andrew. The question is, how did you handle personal challenges, for example, power going out or scheduling conflicts? Um, so that was um, definitely an interesting uh, challenge to face. Um, but we, we just kind of had to keep on trucking, right? When someone loses power, you know, they, they sent us a message and said, hey, power is out. And it's like, well, all right, let's, you know, let's see what you were working on and let's try and divide and conquer and, and get these features done. Um, it was really just a big team effort and I couldn't be happier uh, with this team being able to collaborate as well as we were. Yeah, and kind of just to kind of follow up um, with what Travis said, uh, we didn't really have many scheduling conflicts. I think we all kind of, uh, even though kind of maybe uh, not so similar time zones, but we all, we all kind of just wanted to be um, as collaborative as possible. So we were just kind of working around uh, everybody's schedules, uh, depending on the day and the week. So that was really great. Um, as far as, you know, the, you know, power going out, uh, in you know, under normal circumstances, that would have really haven't been an issue, but we did have a minor hiccup uh, that we had to like kind of do a little bit of refactoring. And that literally came, uh, you know, a few hours before that power outage. So that didn't help, but, um, you know, uh, I was the one that had the power outage, unfortunately. So Travis and Spencer just kept on working. And uh, I, you know, I, I feel very lucky and I appreciate their work because they definitely, uh, you know, uh, took us out of that minor pickle that we got into, so. Excellent, and I appreciate the attitude that you approached it with. All right, uh, Habit Hackers, I'm thoroughly impressed by the quality of your work. Uh, it is evident that you poured your heart and souls into this project and you did a fantastic job. Congratulations. <laughs>